An entitled mom and her son eat poisonous berries despite my warning signs. I'm not sure if this is entitled per se or just plain stupidity, but this happened yesterday morning. So for some background, I live in Southern California, very close to the beach. Needless to say, I encounter a lot of locals and tourists. On the right side of my property across the street, there are shops, a cafe, and a bus stop. Now on my property, I have a holly berry bush, which is poisonous. Now they taste like cherries and have a cinnamon-like aftertaste. So a person that doesn't know about the plant would have no idea of this. The side effects of the berries are nausea, disorientation, diarrhea, vomiting, and severe stomach cramps. Due to my house being on the historic registry and nature protection laws, I can't just remove the bush because some of the birds pick at it and eat from it. I know the berries and leaves aren't poisonous to some species of birds and other critters like squirrels and chipmunks. Anyway, because of this, I have two signs that say, do not eat and danger with a skull and crossbones. The the fact that I have a sign with danger that has a hazard skull and bones deter most people, except for this persistent mom and her boy last morning. So it's around 10.30 a.m. and I take my trash out. This mom who looked about 40 years old had two kids with her, a teen girl who's between 14 and 16 maybe, and a little boy who is between six and eight years old. The mom and the boy are the entitled slash stupid ones here. The teen girl was actually nice. The entitled boy says, Oh mommy, look, the berries. Well, I didn't realize berries grow here. Let's get some. I ask her to read the signs that say don't eat them. She scoffs and says, Uh, it's not like you need all these berries. You should be nice and give them to my kids. Don't be greedy. Mommy, when are we going to have the berries? Right now. Teen girl, do you want any? Um, no. Mom, I think they're... She gets cut off by the mom who says, Okay then. Because I'm older, I couldn't run fast enough to catch them. The mom Mom and son broke a branch off the berry bush. Then they started running and scarfing down the berries and went to the bus stop across the street with the teen girl reluctantly following. I was yelling to get her attention for nearly 20 minutes. But after the mom and the boy started getting overly sweaty and acting weird, the teen came to talk to me. She said, um, sir, what's wrong with them? Those berries are poisonous. I tried to warn your mom and your brother, but it's too late. The teen started to cry, thinking that they were going to die. I comforted her saying they'll live but they're just going to be very very sick soon after i went to my house to get seltzer tablets and water bottles to help but by the time i came back both the mom and the son finished all the berries and the boy threw up all over his shirt the mom came back with obvious signs of throwing up herself and to yell at me when i pointed to the signs that said danger and do not eat and that this was her fault she flipped the bird and then left the teen just said sorry I gave her the seltzer tablets and she went into the cafe to get paper towels to clean up her brother. But by the time she came back, the mom vomited too. They all got on the bus and I haven't seen them since. There's a little update from the future. There's been a lot of people asking me about the berries in my house. So I bought my house 50 years ago and I didn't know that the berries were poisonous. Despite me having signs and warning people for all these years, people still managed to eat them. And yes, many people have gotten sick. But due to my house being on the historic registry, I can't remove the bush. So I have to do the best I can do to warn others, but people still eat them. So could I have done something more? Am I the jerk? So basically buying this house is like buying a part-time job. You just have to keep constantly watching to make sure people don't eat your berries all the time. And I'm guessing it's not for legal reasons because you have signs that say don't eat these berries. So I doubt that they would be able to sue you. Maybe some of you guys would know about that. But the OP obviously cares even if they don't get along with every single person that tries to come and eat the berries. I mean, the OP here actually brought out the water and the seltzer tablets even when the mom and her kid just took off with a branch and told her, it's not like you need all these berries. You should be nice and give them to my kids. Don't be greedy. As if this was something that had to do with being greedy. No matter what the mom thinks, the mom knew that the OP here, the original poster, owned this bush. And the owner of this bush was saying, don't eat these berries. But she decided to do it anyway because she assumed the reason the owner was saying no is because she wanted more berries for herself. This is such a ridiculous situation. But let me know how you would handle the situation down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. My girlfriend got implants and her entire personality changed and I no longer feel attracted to her in the same way I was before the surgery. Here's what happened. As the title says, my girlfriend and fiance of 2.5 years recently got breast enhancement surgery. She's been saying she wanted to do it ever since we first began dating and while I expressed to her I didn't think it was necessary, I love the way she looked before, I always said I would support whatever decision she made because it's her body and she's the one who has to live in it. About 
a year ago, her mother died after a long battle with cancer in which she actually went into remission after a double mastectomy, but then the cancer eventually came back and metastasized to her pancreas. It was a horribly painful and unpleasant experience for everyone in her family. I had met my girlfriend after her mom went into remission and after the surgery, so I wasn't there with her for the first battle, which from what I've heard was very traumatic and painful in its own way. When her mother passed, she inherited a fairly large sum of money. Nothing crazy, but enough to put a down payment on a house and finally pay for the surgery she wanted. When she told me she had made the appointment to meet with a plastic surgeon, I was supportive, but again reinforced that I love the way she looked now and suggested that maybe her desire to do this now was connected to her grief because of her mother passing. She pretty much dismissed that notion since she said she wanted to get implants since she was in high school before her mom ever had cancer or the mastectomy. Fair enough. Fast forward about six months ago to the surgery and it goes off without a hitch. Because she was recovering for about a month or so, I didn't really see the finished product right away. And then when I did, they were much bigger than I expected. She told me that there was still swelling and that they would go down and it would look more natural. And the swelling did go down, but they never really looked natural to me. Maybe because I was just so accustomed to the way they looked before the surgery that I am having trouble seeing them any other way. For the past few months, our bedroom life has been okay, but it definitely has dwindled down a bit. We couldn't really do the deed while she was recovering and after she was filling up to it, we overcompensated a bit by doing it a lot, but it was still before I had an idea of what they looked like since when we did it, she would still be in a sports bra and or baggy t-shirt that stayed on during and I was very cautious not to grab at them or anything since they were still tender for so long after. Eventually, she completely recovered and immediately I wasn't thrilled, but I lied and said I thought they looked great. The thing is, I don't hate them or anything. The part part where I started losing attraction to her has been that since she got the surgery, she's getting a lot more attention from random strangers, which I've never minded. She's gotten attention from strangers in the past too. She's a beautiful woman now and before, but since the surgery, she seems so much more receptive to the attention that it just becomes a total turnoff for me. I didn't initially bring it up because I thought maybe I was just being paranoid, and even if I wasn't, it would likely be regarded that way and dismissed either way. But eventually, I started to make little comments here here and there when she would flirt back with the delivery guy or whatever. Nothing terrible, but like, not sure he needs a tip after all, or something like that. She got annoyed, and eventually, I did bring up my discomfort, and she did what I assumed she would, which was accuse me of being paranoid and reading into things, and saying that what I thought was happening was not happening. And then, a couple of weeks ago, I found out that while out with her friends, she was convinced to enter a wet t-shirt contest. A friend of mine happened to be at the bar they were at and just sent me a text telling me how great my girlfriend's honkers looked. He was joking and later said he framed it that way because he was uncomfortable letting me know, but knew he needed to let me know in case I wasn't aware. When I confronted her about it, she didn't understand why I was upset, which is symptomatic of this entire personality change that she seems to have undergone since the procedure. I tried to explain that if she had told me that was happening, I probably would have been fine, but the secrecy and just her general dismissiveness of my concerns and enjoying the extra attention was hurtful. She seemed to think that because she won the wet t-shirt contest, I should just be okay with it and that I am lucky to have her. This simply isn't the person I fell in love with. I know I might be overreacting a bit, but I didn't love how the surgery turned out to begin with and now this entire personality shift has been jarring enough to make me lose interest in being intimate with her at all. For the past two weeks, we've only done the deed twice and I've even had to reject her advances. I tried to be as nice as possible, but when I tell her I'm not in the mood, she now gets very angry angry and frustrated and kind of throws mini tantrums, which is also very new. Like she thinks she's doing me a favor by even wanting to do it with me and I am now somehow ungrateful. I've had some of my friends, male and female alike, mimic this kind of sentiment when I've tried to discuss it, hence bringing it up here. I believe the person I fell in love with is still there somewhere, but I might just be kidding myself. I'm at the point where I want to suggest couples counseling, but the one time I remotely touched on the subject, she was not receptive to the idea. I don't know what else to do though. She's like a completely different person now and I don't like that person very much. Jumping into the future, there is an update. After the post, I was still uncertain as to what to do. I didn't want to spring anything on her as I felt from her perspective it might seem like my frustrations and concerns were coming out of nowhere unless she provoked something and I didn't want to bring up the past after as much time had already gone by because it felt pretty petty of me to do so. I guess what I didn't realize at the time is that I had become pretty distant and terse with her, which she brought up pretty quickly as well as the fact that I was no longer interested in in initiating any 
anything with her and completely unreceptive to any advances that she made. I told her flat out that her personality had completely changed and I was having a lot of second thoughts about the relationship. She got very upset and asked me why I didn't mention anything. I told her that I had tried to multiple times and she was completely dismissive of it and accused me of being jealous or paranoid. I asked her, when have I ever been either of those things throughout our relationship? And she had to admit that I have never been a jealous or paranoid person in the past. While she admitted that, she still said that she felt her personality was still the same and that while she may not know the reason for my perception, it was still wrong. She apologized for accusing me of being jealous but said, I'm wrong. It was weird because it felt like suddenly it got turned on me and that somehow it was all on me. I was pretty stunned and felt like again she was being dismissive of my viewpoints. She said she didn't know what else to say. We agreed to put a pin in it for the night as I was kind of speechless and talking to her felt a bit like talking to a wall anyhow. That night she tried to initiate again and I said no. I kind of snapped at her. I was quite flamoxed and said something to the effect of, wow, you didn't hear a single word I said tonight, did you? And apparently that broke her. She became so aggressive and hostile in a way that I had never experienced before. She was hysterical, screaming, thrashing, throwing the pillows and bedding around wildly, knocked over a lamp that broke and that didn't slow her down. Then she started pushing me and telling me to get the heck out and that she never wants to see me again. At first I was resistant, pleading, pleading with her to calm her down, but she was just getting more and more aggressive. So I grabbed my wallet and my keys. I ran out to my car and my socks and boxers. I could still hear her slamming doors from inside of my car outside of our house, her house. I just drove around all night thinking. I was shaking. I was genuinely scared. I was angry. I think I was in shock. I didn't have my phone, so I couldn't call a friend or my parents to go to their house, and I didn't want to show up in the middle of the night under these circumstances anyway. I just drove around all night and I didn't sleep. I waited until about 8 a.m. to go back to the house, which was around when she would leave to go to work, but her car was still there. So I drove and got breakfast and coffee at a drive through and when I came back an hour later, she had eventually left. By this point, I'm feeling pretty calm. I go inside to grab some of my things and the entire living room is just a mess. Chairs tipped over, the coffee table completely shifted out of place, a plant ripped from a pot with dirt everywhere. You can tell she's trying to clean it up a little, but didn't get very far. I went to our bedroom where my phone and my clothes were and in the middle of the hallway on the way to the bedroom was a pile of all of my things including my phone which had a broken screen. Fortunately it was still functioning so I called into work and I spent the next four to five hours packing up a bunch of my stuff and loading it into my car. I also called a friend of mine and drove over to his house. He said I could crash with him for a bit while I figure out what to do next. Later that day I sent her a text saying we should talk and she responded with there was nothing to talk about and that she thinks it would be better for both of us if I find somewhere else to stay for the time being. I explained that I had already done so and was staying with my friend and then she went radio silent. She didn't respond to that or any of the follow-up texts I sent. About a week after all of this, she sent me a text that simply said I need to figure out a time to come and pick up the rest of my things. I asked if she would be there so we could talk and she said she had nothing to say to me and I should come and get the rest of my things when she isn't there. So I tried calling her and she didn't answer. I sent her a text asking her if she was done with us and she said yes, I thought I made that clear which maybe she did. I thought it was just an episode and we would at least talk. Later that week, I went and picked up the rest of my things and sent a text saying I left my keys on the counter. She said she was getting the locks changed anyway. I've known this woman for nearly three years and all of this along the way is new. She was always communicative and rarely hostile. She might pout or be passive aggressive but this felt like a full-blown tantrum. She was seething like a feral animal or something. She was completely unapologetic and calculatingly cold in a way that she'd never been before. A few weeks later, after moving into my own apartment, I found out that she was already seeing someone new. I don't know if she started seeing him while we were together. It wouldn't shock me. At some point in the last year, she just stopped respecting me. And when I think back, there were probably signs before the surgery, maybe even wanting to get the surgery. I don't know. The whole thing feels like such a blur. I think I may have been in denial for a while. 
Maybe I'm just telling myself that now to feel better about it. I have not heard from her in weeks and I have not tried to contact her on my end either. I did receive a missed call from her in the middle of the night about a week ago, but there was no message or text and I didn't bother following up to see what she wanted. I'm not ready to speak with her again. I don't know when or if I'll ever be. The last couple of weeks with her after the big blow up were the worst days of my life. I've never felt so meaningless or disregarded and she was the person who I trusted most in the world at one point. Anyway, sorry this isn't a more positive update, but a few people had asked. I would have posted it sooner, but it's taken me a while to be comfortable talking about what happened. I still get upset thinking about it. I'm hoping that writing it out would help, but honestly, I'm just sad and upset again right now. Fortunately, I have my whole life ahead of me, and I am fortunate in that I still have plenty going for me. I definitely feel more cynical now than I did before, which sucks, but I'm hoping that passes. Jumping into the future, there is a final update. I can't can't imagine many people care, but I got a lot of requests for an update. So here it is for those who care. My ex and I are now friends. She actually finally got into therapy and has really been more like the person I thought I knew. She said she realized that she was acting out because her mom died, which I tried to discuss with her. And also there were some issues in our relationship I was unaware of, which admittedly I did not try to discuss because I was unaware of them. She expressed to me that because of my personality, which is pretty even keeled and plastic, Acid. It can come off as indifferent or even judging. For a while, she was feeling like I didn't find her attractive anymore, which was pretty surprising to me because I always made an effort to let her know how gorgeous I thought she was. But I guess my behavior didn't always convey it even if my words did, which is on me and something I have discussed in therapy. Being more enthusiastic or letting people know how much I appreciate them and catering it to them specifically, individually. And her therapist helped her realize a lot of what she was going through, which which was nice because she essentially said that she forgave me for her reading into essentially the way I am and turning it into a negative as opposed to it just being the way that I am and in no way a reflection of her or how I felt about her and I believed her and I apologize for not making her feel as beautiful as I think she is and generally not being a more present partner. She also apologized for her behavior after her mom died. She actually admitted she was trying to make me jealous and when it didn't work she went temporarily in insane. She said she felt like she lost me before her mom died, but because we never talked about it, after her mom died, she started acting out and feeling kind of desperate and lost control. I am so grateful for her honesty. I thought I had been going crazy. Ultimately though, neither one of us has a desire to jump back into a relationship with the other. She had brought it up passively as something down the road and in the future, but when I remained silent, she asked if that was something I was hoping for, and I had to be honest. It wasn't. I love her, but the person I fell in love with doesn't exist anymore. I can't see her the same way and I am quite frankly not in love with the person she is now. Even with everything she is saying, her previous behavior is hard to let go of, let alone ignore entirely. She agreed with me. What a relief. We love each other but both feel like we need time away from each other and figuring out who we are and now we can at least be friends. I thought I lost my best friend and I thought because of all of this that it was gone forever but I got my best friend back. We're not best friends anymore in the way we were, but when faced with the alternative, it's almost better because I missed her friendship more than anything, long before everything fell apart. Anyways, things are positive and there's no hate or animosity. I feel terrible for what I put her through, but as my therapist reminds me, it wasn't intentional. At the end of the day, you are only yourself and people have a choice to live with it or not. He's helped me a ton. So were either of us the jerk with how things were handled? This OP really had to go through it. He somehow was able to keep a level head through such a painful experience and on top of that took accountability for every part that he attributed to himself and even some things that I don't think necessarily he even needed to take accountability for. He seems very accommodating. I think most people wouldn't be able to handle basically getting ghosted by her, not wanting to talk at all other than the text that she sent basically saying to go away and don't be there when I'm home and then to get hit with the answer of whether or not they're together with yes, I thought I made that clear saying that she thought she made it was clear that they're not together and then come to find out she's already been been seeing someone. That seems pretty obvious that the most likely answer here is the entire time that he was staying out of the house that she was already dating during that time or with whoever she ended up being with. So when her personality changed, her personality really changed. But if she wanted to do that, she should have just been honest and said, I don't want to waste your time. I want to go explore the world. I want to be with other people and I don't want to hurt you. So I'm going to break up with you, then do all of that. We'll never know for sure what happened, but from the sounds of it, 
it was somewhat ambiguous and maybe that was intentional. So the things didn't work out with this new guy, she could always come back to the OP. But maybe you see the situation totally differently. Let me know how you interpret it down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.